Hi, hello, good evening, how are you? I hope you're well. Here's some more Wintersmith by Terry Pratchett. Book three of the Tiffany Aiken series. Last night we left her, she was outside when she should run out from Miss Treason. She was outside, looking at the snow, feeling the cold, calling him. She turned round, she saw him, he was standing there. Should we pick it up from where we left off? Let's go. She felt a bit silly now, but satisfied too. This was what a witch did. She faced what she was afraid of, and then it held no more fear. She was good at this. She turned and saw the wintersmith. That's where we left it off, didn't we? Ready? Remember this, said her third thoughts, cutting in. Every little detail is important. The wintersmith was nothing, but the snow outlined him. It flowed round him in lines as if travelling on an invisible skin. He was just a shape and nothing more except perhaps for two tiny pale purple grey dots in the air where you might expect to find eyes. Tiffany stood still, her mind frozen, her body waiting to be told what to do. The hand made of fallen snow was reaching towards her now, but very slowly, as he would reach out towards an animal that you don't want to, fr want to frighten. There was... Something, some strange sense of things unsaid because there was no voice to say them. A sense of striving as if the thing was putting heart and soul into the very moment, even if it didn't know the meaning of heart and soul. The hand stopped about a foot away from her. It was formed into a fist and now it turned over and the fingers opened. Something gleamed. It was the white horse, made of silver, on a fine silver chain. Tiffany's hand flew to her throat. But she'd had it on last night before she went to watch the dance. It must have come off, and he had found it. That's interesting, said her third thoughts that busied themselves with the world in their own way. You can't see what's hidden inside an invisible fist. How does that even work? And why are those little purple grey blurs in the air? We'd have expect to find eyes. Why aren't they invisible? That's third thoughts for you. When a huge rock is going to land on your head, they are the thoughts that think, is that an igneous rock such as granite or is it sandstone? <laughs> that part of Tiffany's brain was like a little less precise at the moment. Sorry. That part of Tiffany's brain that was a little less precise at the moment watched the silver horse dangle on its chain. Her first thought was, take it. Her second thought was, don't take it. This is a trap. Her third thought was, really, don't take it. It will be colder than you can imagine. And then the rest of her overruled her thoughts entirely and said, take it. It's part of who you are. Take it. When you hold of it, you think of home. Take it. She held out her right hand. The horse dropped into it. Instinctively, she closed her fingers over it. It was indeed colder than it should have been. And it burned as well. She screamed, the wintersmith's snowy outline become a flurry of flakes. The snow around her feet erupted with a cry of, Crivens! And a mass of feagles grabbed her feet and carried her upright across the clearing and back in through the cottage's doorway. Tiffany forced her hand open and, with trembling fingers, pulled the horse off of her palm. It left a perfect print, a white horse on pink flesh. It wasn't a burn, it was a freeze. Miss Treason's chair rumbled round on its wheels. Come here, child, she ordered. Still clasping her hand, trying to force back the tears, Tiffany walked over to her. Stand right here by my chair this instant. Tiffany did say this was no time to be disobedient. I wish to look inside your ear, said Miss Treason. Brush your hair one side. Tiffany held back her hair and winched, winced when she heard the tickle of mouse whiskers. Then the creature was taken away. Ah, I am surprised, said Miss Treason. I can see nothing. Um... What were you expecting to see? Tiffany ventured. Daylight, snapped Miss Treason so loudly that the mouse scuttled away. Have you no brains at all, child? I uh, don't know if anybody is interested, said Rob anybody, but I think yon winter smith has off skied and it's stopped snowing now. Nobody was listening. When witches row, they concentrate. It was mine, grabbing up the horse and chain again. A trinket! No, of course, this might not be the best time to tell ye, 
Rob went on miserably. Do you think you need a trinket to be a witch? Yes, a witch needs no devices. You've used shambles. Used, yes, don't need, not need. I mean, it's quite melting away, Rob said, quite smiling quite nervously. Anger grabbed Tiffany's tongue. How dare this stupid old crone talk about not needing things? Boffo, she shouted. Boffo, boffo, boffo. Silence slammed down. After a while, Miss Treason looked past Tiffany and said, You wee feagle schemies, get out of here right... Oh, she's speaking Scottish again. You wee feagle schemies, get out of here right now. I'll ken if you don't. This is hog business. The room filled with a sort of whooshing noise and a door to the kitchen slammed shut. So, said Miss Treason, you know about Boffo, do you? Yes, said Tiffany, breathing heavily. I do. Very well. And have you told anybody? Miss Treason paused and raised a finger to her lips. Then she banged a stick on the floor. I said get it, you scunners. Off into the woods, will you? Check that he's gone really away, will you? I'll see your guilt through your own way if you defy me. From below, there was a sound of a lot of potatoes rumbling as the feagles scrambled out through the little ventilation grill. Now they've gone, said Miss Treason. They'll stay gone too. Boffo will see of that. Somehow, in the space of a few seconds, Miss Treason had become more human and a lot less scary. Well, slightly less scary. How did you find out? Did you go looking for it? Did you go prowling, rummaging? said Miss Treason. No, I'm not like that. I found out by accident one day whilst you were having a nap. Tiffany rubbed her hand. Does that hurt a lot? said Miss Treason, leaning forwards. She might be blind, but... Like all the senior witches who knew what they were doing, she noticed everything. No, not now. It did, though. Look, I... Then you will learn to listen. Do you think the winter smith has gone? He just seemed to vanish. I mean, vanish even more. I think he just wanted to give me back my necklace. Do you think that that is the sort of thing the spirit of winter, who commands blizzard and frost, would really do? I don't know, Miss Treason. He's the only one I've met. You danced with him. I didn't know I was going to dance with him. Nevertheless. Tiffany waited and then said, Nevertheless what? Just general, nevertheless. That little horse led him to you. But he's not here now. You're right about that. I would know if he was. Tiffany walked up to the front door, hesitated for just a moment and then opened it and went out into the clearing. There was a bit of snow here and there, but the day was turning into just another one of those grey-skied winter days. I'd know if he was here too, she thought, and he isn't. And her second thought said, oh, all right, how do you know? We've both touched the horse, she said under her breath. She looked around at the empty branches and the sleeping trees fiddling with a silver chain in her hand. The forests were curling in on themselves, ready for the winter. He's out there but not close. He must be very busy with a whole winter to make. She said, thank you, automatically, because her mother had always said that politeness cost nothing and went back inside. It was very hot inside now, but Miss Treason always had a huge log pile built by the secret of Boffo. The local woodcutters always kept the pile high. A chilly witch might get nasty. I would like a cup of black tea, said the old woman as Tiffany walked in looking thoughtful. She waited until Tiffany was washing out the cup, then said, Have you heard the stories about me, child? Her voice was kindly. There had been shouts, there had been things that might have been better put, there had been temper, there had been defiance. But they were there together with nowhere else to go. The quiet voice was a peace offering, and Tiffany was glad of that. Um, what, that you have a demon in your cellar? Tiffany answered. Her mind was still full of puzzles. And you eat spiders, and you get visited by kings and princes, and that any flower planted in your garden blooms black. Oh, is that what they say? said Miss Treason, looking delighted. I hadn't heard that last one. How oh, nice. Did I hear that I... Did you hear that I walk around at night in the dark time of year and reward those who have been good citizens with a purse of silver? But if they have been bad, I slit open their bellies with my thumbnail like this. Tiffany leapt backwards as a wrinkled hand twisted around and Miss Treason's yellow thumbnail scythed past her stomach. The old woman looked terrified. No, no, I haven't heard that one, she gasped, pressing up against the sink. What? 
Ah, oh, it was a wonderful story with real historical antecedents, said Miss Treason, her vicious scowl becoming a smile. And the one about me having a cow's tail. Oh, a cow's tail? Haven't heard that one. Really? How very vexing, said Miss Treason, lowering her finger. I fear the art of storytelling has got into a pretty bad shape these days. I really shall have to do something about that. This is just another kind of boffo, right? said Tiffany. She wasn't totally sure. Miss Treason had looked pretty scary with that thumbnail. No wonder girls left so quickly. Ah, oh, you do have a brain after all. Of course it is. Boffo, yes. A good name for it. Boffo, indeed. The art of expectations. Show people what they want to see. Show them what they think should be there. I've got a reputation to keep up after all. Boffo, Tiffany thought. Boffo, boffo, boffo. She went over to the skulls, picked one up and read the label underneath, just like she'd done a month ago. Ghastly skull number one, price two ninety nine. Boffo novelty and joke shop number four, tenth egg streak and more pork. If it's a laugh, if it's a boffo, was the label on the underside of it. Very lifelike, aren't they? said Miss Treason, clicking back to her chair. If you can say that about a skull, of course that is. Ha <laughs> ha! The shop sold a wonderful machine for making spider webs. You pour in this sticky stuff, do you see? And with practice, quite good webs could be made. Can't abide creepy crawlies. But of course, I've got to have the webs. Did you notice the dead flies? Yes, said Tiffany, glancing up. They're currants. I thought you had vegetarian spiders. Well done. Nothing wrong with your eyes, at least. I got my hat from there, too. Wicked old witch number three. A must for scary parties. I think it was, anyway. I've still got their catalogue somewhere, if you're interested. Do all witches buy from Boffo? said Tiffany. Ah, only me, at least round here. Oh, and I believe old Mistress Breathless over in Two Falls used to buy warts from there. But why? said Tiffany. Because she couldn't grow them. Just couldn't grow them at all, poor woman. Tried everything. Face like a baby's bottom all whole life. No, I meant, why do you want to seem so... Tiffany hesitated, but went on. Awful. I have my reasons, said Miss Treason. But you don't do those things the stories say you do, do you? Kings and princes don't come to consult you, do they? No, but they might do said Miss Treason stoutly. If they got lost, for example. Oh, I know all about those stories. I made up most of them myself. You made up the stories about yourself? Of course. Why not? I couldn't leave something as important as that to amateurs. But people say you can see a man's soul, Miss Treason chuckled. I know. Didn't make that one up, but I'll tell you. For some of my parishioners, I'd need a magnifying glass. I see what they see. I hear with their ears. I knew their fathers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers. <coughs> I know the rumours and the secrets and the stories and the truths. And I am justice to them and I am fair. Look at me. See me. Tiffany looked and looked past the black cloak and the skulls and the rubber cobwebs and the black flowers and the blindfold and the stories and saw a little half-deaf and blind old lady. Boffo made the difference. Not just the silly party stuff, but boffo thinking, the rumours and the stories. Miss Treason had power because they thought she did. It was like the standard witch's hat, but Miss Treason was taking boffo much, much further. A witch needs no devices, Miss Treason, she said. Don't get smart with me, child. Didn't that girl Weatherwax tell you all of this? Oh yes, you don't need a wand or a shamble or even a pointy hat to be a witch. But it helps a witch to put on a show. People expect it. They'll believe in you. I didn't get where I am today by wearing a woolly bobble hat and a gingham apron. I look the part. I. There was a crash from outside in the direction of the dairy. Our little blue friends, said Miss Treason, raising her eyebrows. No, they're absolutely forbidden to go into any dairy I work in, Tiffany began, heading for the door. Oh, I hope it's not Horace. I told you it'd be nothing but trouble, did I not? Miss Treason shouted as she hurried away. It was Horace. He'd squeezed out of his cage again. He could make himself quite runny when he wanted to. There was a broken butter dish on the floor, but although it had been full of butter, 
There was none there now, just a greasy patch. And from the darkness under the sink, there came a sort of high-speed grumbling noise. A sort of... Oh, you're after butter now, are you, Horace? Said Tiffany, picking up the dairy broom. That's practically cannibalism, you know. Still... It was better than mice, she had to admit. Finding little piles of mouse bones on the floor was a bit distressing. Even Miss Treason had not been able to work that one out. A mouse she happened to be looking through would be trying to get at the cheeses and then it'd go all dark. That was because Horace was a cheese. Tiffany knew that Lanka blue cheeses were always a bit on the lively side and sometimes had to be nailed down, but... Well, she was highly skilled at cheese making, even though she said it herself, and Horace was definitely a champion. The famous blue streaks that gave him the variety its wonderful colour were really pretty, although Tiffany wasn't sure they should be glowing in the dark. She prodded the shadows with the end of the broom. There was a crack, and when she pulled the stick out again, two inches were missing from the end. Then there was a poo noise, and the missing piece of handle bounced off the wall on the other side of the room. No more milk for you, then said Tiffany, straightening up, and thought, Wintersmith came and gave me my horse back. He took the trouble to do that. <laughs> that is quite impressive, when you think about it. I mean, he's got to organise avalanches and gales and come up with new shapes for snowflakes and everything, but he spared a bit of time just to come and give me my necklace back. <sighs> and he just stood there. And then he vanished. I mean, vanished even more. Hmm. She left Horace muttering under the sink and made tea for Miss Treason, who was back at her weaving. Then she quietly went up into her room. Mm -hmm. I wonder what she's going to think next then. Do you think she's a little bit smitten with the wintersmith? Hmm. Yes. As the father of a teenage daughter, I can sense it a mile away. <laughs> right. Okay. I will see you all tomorrow night for some more Wintersmith. Bye.